All right, welcome back to the writer's room. Um, Aaron, this week you're gonna have to behave, okay? You're gonna have to calm down. I act up too much. Because we, we have a doctor in the house, Dr. Bob Tabor. Oh, yes. And that's Pastor, Bob, Pastor Dr. Bob Tabor to you. Um, he's joining us this week, um, and we'll hear from him in a little while. But um, first, Aaron, why don't you tell us about Come Out of That Grave? All right. So, as you just said, the first song we're doing is Come Out of That Grave. Uh, the subtitle is Resurrection Power, and it's by um, Bethel Music. Uh, this is off their most recent album, and it's probably one of my favorite songs. Um, I was planning to skip over the first verse, but... Literally about 30 seconds before we started filming, I read the lyrics again and it clicked in my mind. So this song is all about the power of praise and the power of worship and, you know, the spirit that it brings. And so the song starts with, there's a sling in my voice and a stone in my praise pushing back when the darkest weapons form. And that's uh, referring to, you know, David and Goliath. And David had a sling and a stone, and it's it's talking about how when we praise, when we worship, it's not just empty words, there's power behind that. Power to push back the darkest weapons that form against us. And um, the chorus and the, the choruses in the song all read, there's resurrection power when we sing the name of Jesus, resurrection power when we raise a mighty sound. So come on, let the praise get loud, make that empty grave resound, because there is resurrection power in his name. And it's like, it, it's, it's like Pastor Joey always says, you know, when our, when our praises go up, heaven comes down. And so it might, it might seem like, you know, we're just, we're just singing a song or, you know, we're just, you know, saying thank you, Jesus. But when we do that, heaven comes down. And the, the resurrection power of Jesus resides within us, and there's power behind that. Um, we get to the second verse. Uh, it says, there are days I have seen filled with heartache and loss that have buried my heart beneath the weight. And I think that's something everyone can relate to, especially this time of year, holiday time, you know, we get to spend time with family. And for a lot of people, it's very hard for, you know, those family members that aren't there. So there's always days we have that are filled with heartache and loss. And especially this time of year, it's a joyful time of year, but it's also a reminder of that pain. But then the next line says, but every time his praise breaks out, dead things rise up from the ground and I won't leave my song inside that empty grave. So you know when we, when we we can we have when we we have the ability to break out of that place we have the ability to break free and to you know when we when we praise it's not just for God but it frees our heart you know it frees us from those those chains that bind us and that's what the bridge of this song says too it says dead man come out of that grave come out of that grave and it says when we sing. It says, captives, let go of those chains. Let go of those chains when we praise. So with all that said, um, the song's about the power of praise and the power of worship and how, you know, it's not just, you know, it's more than just, you know, we're giving our thanks to God, but it also frees our hearts because when we our praises go up, heaven comes down and resides within us and we can break those chains that hold us. Um, yeah. Well, just as a reminder, there are three things that we usually try to talk about um, each week when we uh, preach song. Um, number one is uh, what is the truth of the song, meaning where is it found in Scripture? And then the form of the song, and then also um, you know, how can we use the song in worship? But, but so I, what I wanted to talk about a little bit was a little bit of the form um, and especially on that bridge, like just the way that 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 bridge is sung, like you'll hear in a minute, it's so. I mean, I did it just now. Like you just want to, you yeah, know, yeah, dead man come out of that. I mean, it's just so um, anthemic. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of a lot of these praise and worship songs are, but especially them. And um, in you go on later in the song and you just sing that bridge over and over again. And it's, um, I think, you know, uh, you've done it in your services. Um, if, if we do it in the main service, I, you know, I think it can be, um, just a big, you know, congregational moment. Yeah. yeah. 
And um, I, I feel like some people can be lost, you know, dead man come out of that grave, and they're like, well, I'm not dead. But it can be so much more than that. You know, the resurrection power of Jesus isn't just resurrecting dead things, dead bodies, because your dead things can be dead hopes, dead dreams, dead spirits. There's so many things, and it's not, you know, it's not just rising a dead man out of that out of the ground, literally, there's so many things that can be applied to that. And um, so, you know, if you have a broken heart, if you have a broken spirit, when we praise, it can resurrect that. And we always talk on this um, show or video podcast, whatever it is that we call it, we always talk about how these new songs always harken back to older songs. And um, with this one, and this comes out of Bethel, I guess we might as well say who wrote it who wrote it brandon it blake just says Bethel. no <laughs> brian johnson and chris davenport so it says so anyway uh, um i feel like there's things that happen in in circles and cycles over there like because a couple of albums ago they did um uh, an old uh, an old song ain't no grave and so i feel like this is kind of a lingering cycle of having gone through that and so so this kind of harkens yeah. back to that song and there was another one um that uh another song called evidence the that you're going to lead for us soon and that song uh once again it i don't know if it technically comes out of bethel but it's from one of the josh baldwin one of the guys that is in their sphere um and to me that song is um, extending the cycle of a great song that they did called Goodness of God um, because it talks about the, the song Evidence talks about the goodness of God so I feel like you know they just kind of you know kind of ride yeah. this well, cycle also, that, that, that happens um, in their writer's room yeah well also Brandon Lake who sings this song is the same guy who sang Graves in the Garden with Elevation it's all about you turn graves into gardens you yeah. turn bones into armies and so, you know, of course, you know, Jesus' resurrection is, you know, one of the greatest miracles of all time. And the reason that we can celebrate, especially, you know, Christmas and these holidays. And so it's very prevalent in worship music today. And I got, I got to tell you, Aaron, when you were going through the lyrics of this song, and this song was brand new to me. I don't yeah. think I'd ever heard it He before. heard it for the first time today. <laughs> and... Uh, even sitting here learning it, and we played it through a time or two. And you going through those lyrics made a huge difference in this song mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. And I think way too often, singers, whoever, you know, the choir hears this a lot, but we're guilty of singing lyrics and not really understanding yeah. what we're singing. Yeah. And your explanation as you went through that, to me, gave this song, I have a lot more love for this song. But seriously, yeah. it's not that I, I, did, I didn't have much of an opinion about it, just just barely hearing it, but um, I'm like, wow, I like that there's a sling in my voice and a stone in my praise, that reference to David and Goliath. I mean, that's, and when I first heard it, I'm like, <clears throat> I, without really thinking about it, what exactly are we saying? <laughs> you know, and of course we all know the reference, but it really brought it to life. Well, it's interesting that that's what you bring up because that's really the heart of what we do in the writer's room. And speaking of cycles and circles, that comes from you. Uh, yeah. You know, when uh, I've mentioned it before on this show, I'm just going to call it a show from now on. Is that okay, Stephen? I'm going to call this a show. This is a show called The Writer's Room. Okay, so I can we can put that to rest of not knowing what to call it. It's a show. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. So we talk, I, I talked about on this show before, um, uh, one of the very first ones is when, when Pastor Bob or myself choose a song, we don't choose a song hardly ever based on popularity. We don't choose a song. Um, okay, so what we do choose a song for, it's got to minister to one of us um, and as, as leadership of, of, of this ministry. Uh, we trust that if it ministers to him, if it ministers to me or ministers to Aaron, that it's going to minister to the people that we lead in worship. And, and so the fact that, that you, you know, bring that out, that, that is the heart of the writer's room. I call it praying the lyrics.
lives. I mean, we need to hear them just spoken, sometimes just speaking them, which kind of is what Aaron mm -hmm. did, brings it better to life because the music can facilitate the lyrics, but sometimes it can also be a hindrance. Yeah. Well, in, in real time, when you were talking, did I cut you off? No. Okay, good. In the real time, in real time, I was, you were talking about the first verse and, <laughs> you know, this is a song that, that Aaron brought to us, so yeah, neither one of us are super familiar with it. And I was like, what does that mean, a sling in my voice? Oh, in a stone. And it, yeah, well, that's <laughs> it literally, it. I, I've listened to this song for a couple of months now, and every time I hear that first line, I'm like, whatever. And then literally 30 seconds before we started, I was like, Oh, that's, that's, called a, what that's that called an aha moment, and we all, it's <laughs> we a all shared have. experience, Stephen. We have a shared experience. I think it becomes hard, too, for the people we're leading. You know, mm -hmm. we've heard the song, you guys, you said a couple months, you know, it's fresh for me, Pastor Todd, I'm sure, do it. But, um, so, you know, we take this song, you know, and if we do take it to the sanctuary and we lead it, you know, maybe it's the first time they've heard it. So we do have to keep those kinds of things in mind. That's why when the choir, you know, they hear that a lot from me, pounding home those lyrics. Anyway. Yeah. Well, in, oh, I'll just real quick. In our church, I mean, we have an amazing pastor who is an amazing preacher. And so this is our opportunity to talk, okay? This is our opportunity to to say things that, that mm, we might say from the platform, but... You know, if a song, you, you, this, this might be one of your isms, but if a song needs that much explanation, not that this one does, but if a, if a song needs a ton of explanation, well, it's probably, but I mean, I think it is helpful, um, you know, for those of you that are, that are watching, you know, to hear from us in this way, uh, and also helpful just to, you know, understand why we, we sing the songs that we do and, uh, and just, explain them a little bit because you know this is kind of poetic and very creative in, in his lyric writing yeah so pastor bob likes it we'll play it on sunday <laughs> <laughs> there's a sling in my voice and a stone in my praise pushing back when the darkest weapons fall there's a power even death can't defy when the name of our God is lifted high. Cause there is resurrection power when we see the name of Jesus. Resurrection power when we raise a mighty sound. So come on, let the praise get loud. Make that empty grave. Resurrection power in his name. And there are days I have seen filled with heartache and loss that have buried my heart beneath the wave. But every time his praise breaks out, dead things rise up.
uh, just did want to mention we have a, a guest today. The writer's room um, needs no introduction. Pastor Bob has been serving at this church for almost 15 years. Um, uh, this, the, the music pastor, choir director, uh, just the leader of the music ministry here at BCOG. And um, we wanted to invite him to come because uh, the, the next song that we're going to do is, is a song called Cornerstone. And every once in a while, all right, there, there's a song that, that comes along. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you put this in the same category, uh, you know, throughout the ages, you know, Amazing Grace, um, even you maybe Shout to the Lord. Um, just throughout time, there's just been, you know, songs that are just, you, you, you hear it and you know that that's going to be, um, a song for the church for a long, long time. So this song, Cornerstone, is definitely one of those uh, songs that is yet to run its course here at Beaufort Church of God. Uh, in fact, we'll be doing it this coming Sunday. And um, again, we wanted to, to ask Pastor Bob to come in and uh, just talk about a song that's very near and dear to him. Yeah, um, the hit, the song is very hymn-like. You know, I have a deep appreciation, love for hymns. It's all we had when I was younger, um, and it was enough. A lot of our theology, a lot of our um, what we believe about Christ, can be found in those hymns. And you know, occasionally a, a line or two will come back to you, the song that you've sang, and and you know, I learned to, learned a part sing when I was a young man just by holding a hymnal. We used to we used to not have the screens and the projectors and and all of that. Um, I, I was, this song is, is special in multiple, for multiple reasons for me. Um, first of all, it's special because it says Christ is the center. He's the foundation. And if that isn't true for you, or if that isn't true for us, we're wasting our time. And then there's a, there's a verse of this song that personally just gets me every single time we sing it, every single time we hear it. But again, only knowing that Christ is the foundation. And I, I did a little, I did a little research, you know, the, the, this song is very much like the hymn we all know, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. And the writer of that hymn, Edward Mote, did a little research on him. Guess how many hymns he wrote? One. Wow. Uh, <laughs> one. It was certainly enough because that's a great one. That's a great lyric. But and I say like eight hundred or something. I know. I I, I, I was amazed I, by that. If, if I would have guessed out loud, I would have guessed one. So, uh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's phenomenal. So it was. It was amazing that you know he he was he was a writer he. He had not always lived his life for God, but, you know, in later years did. And, and he wrote this hymn, and it's been heard around the ages and around the world. And, uh, and I would say, dare say, just about every hymnal that you would ever pick up. But even deeper than that, the text really goes back to the book of Ephesians. The second chapter, starting in verse 19. Now, therefore... You are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. So it's not just... God doesn't necessarily live in wood and stone. I mean, he's God. He can do whatever he wants to, but he lives within these bones, these, these buildings, these vessels that he has created. And um, all I can say, this is one of the best songs that have, has ever come out of Hillsong. And they write great songs. There, there's hundreds. And hundreds that are great, but if you ask me, this this is just one of the best. Mm -hmm. Written by Reuben Morgan, um, 
a man who has been their worship leader for a long time, among others. Um, and they did give Moat, uh, they had to, uh, a credit here. Jonas Myron, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think Jonas Myron co-wrote 10,000 Reasons as well. I did just a, um, when I when I hear the word cornerstone, it just makes me think of strength. I, uh, I assumed that, that it's a, like a masonry term. And it is, you know, uniting two masonry walls in an intersection, but that, you know, the cornerstone, that that's the the strongest part of, of a structure. And and it, it does say that, but this, this part of, of the definition jumped out at me. This is something that is essential, indispensable, or basic. Um, you know, essential, that that's, you know, and you've got to think of this in, in terms of who uh, Christ is to us. Essential, yes. Indispensable, yes. Basic, yes. Um, that's where it starts. That is the foundation of this whole thing we call Christianity. It is the basic, bare bones, can't have it without him, can't live how we live without him, can't. You see, so, um, so I mean, and I just did this in basic, you know, I was like, well, I'm offended. No, no, that's absolutely true. Um, it, it, it's the, it, it's basic. It, it's the basis of our entire faith. Yeah. You know, this whole 2020 year, I mean, my goodness, none of us are worried about kicking it to the curb and <laughs> we're ready to move on, you know, and I think, you know, it's been, it's changed, it's changed all of us in some regard. It's just been a, a tough year for all of us. And this second verse, and, and here's the thing, even before that, we all go through experiences that are tough in life. Every single person watching this has been through something. And here's the thing, if you haven't, hang on. <laughs> It's coming at some point. But this second verse, I mean, it just speaks to that and speaks to exactly what um, we've all lived out in 2020. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. I don't know about you, but I'm so grateful for the grace of God. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that God is an anchor we can hold on to. He's a foundation. Build your life on him and you will be, you'll, you may be shaken, but you'll still be holding on. Yeah, and that, that's something we've talked about before too and probably something I live by and tell people is, you know, people also often have the misconception that, oh, when you get saved and turn your heart to Christ, everything's going to be good. Yes, yeah. And that's not true. That's not <laughs> that's biblical. Not true. And uh, it's like the second verse says, in every high and stormy gale. It's like when, when we talked about Sea of Victory, the opening line is, the weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And that's referring to a Bible verse, and a lot of people take that as, oh, well, if I believe in God, no weapon will form. And no, that's not true. It will happen. And this song, in every high and stormy gale, you're going to go through storms. But when you do, when you build your life on that cornerstone, it can't knock you over. Um, and yeah, the line two in, in verse um, two or three, one, one says verse three. Anyway, when darkness seems to hide his face, a song that we did in the last um, episode of this show, um, was uh, just one word, the darkness has to retreat. Um, so it's, I, you, you kind of don't get a chance with something that he was saying earlier until you pick apart these songs and really dissect them. You don't get a chance to, to notice these things of how, you know, it all kind of fits together. You know, this song talks about darkness, that song talked about darkness and, and, and all of that. If there's ever darkness, well, it talks about overcoming the darkness. and. In that, and it is biblical. In this world, you will have trouble, uh, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Yeah. And um, it makes me wonder about 2020 if, if Jesus is about to come back 
because I wonder if 2020 is all about him making that verse true. <laughs> so maybe maybe everyone hasn't had trouble yet, so I'm going to give them 2020 so I can <laughs> so I can fulfill that and then I'll come back. <laughs> well, and darkness that they're referring to comes in all forms. Yeah. You know, and it could be many, many things. It could be a personal struggle you're having. It could be it could be the loss of a loved one. It could be uh, a family matter. It could be a financial. It could be a spiritual, emotional. It could be anything. Mm -hmm. But when it comes, rest assured, there is an anchor. There's a cornerstone that you can run to and take your burdens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, it's not related to song. My favorite Bible verse is Romans 8, 18, which says, Our present sufferings are not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. And it's encouraging because it, it's a reminder that it says our present sufferings. Yes. It tells me that there will be sufferings, there will be storms, there will be all these things, but it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't say it can't compare. It doesn't, it's not even worthy to be compared to the glory of heaven.
shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in Him be found, dressed in His righteousness alone. song uh, every time we do it in any setting uh, that, that song uh, delivers um, and, and we're so thankful for the message of that song um, uh, I hope that this week and these songs and, and, and what we've said about these songs has meant something to you uh, that you, you'll be encouraged in your faith encouraged in, encouraged in your walk um, and, and I hope that this ministered to you um, and be sure to uh, be with us on Sunday. We'll, we'll do the song in, in church, um, but we'll, we'll close in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we've met with you. We thank you for the fact that you use people, that you anoint your people to write songs. And with your word as inspiration, God, words that encourage us, Words that will take us through the darkness, take us through tough times. And God, we've learned and we're, we've been reminded by this song that you are Lord of all. You are our chief cornerstone and we put our hope and trust in you. Nothing else will do but putting our hope in you and the blood of Jesus. And we thank you for all that you do for us. Touch all those, God, who may be watching this or struggling, maybe have something going on, Lord, that's a tough time in their lives. God, we know you can bring them through it. Didn't say we wouldn't have those times, but you did say you would go through it with us. And so thank you. It's comforting to us to know that you're there. Bless all those watching, God. We thank you for who you are. It's in Jesus' name, amen. See you next week.